water, earth, fire, air. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. But then everything changed when the Far Nation attacked. Only Zilong, master of four elements, could stop them. But when the world needed him most, he went AFK. A hundred years has passed and my teammates and I discovered the new OP hero, a frog bender named Ekai. And although his CC skills are great, he has a lot to learn before he's ready to save anyone. But I believe Ekai can save the world. Hello and welcome to another guide. My name is Shinman Takizo and you're watching an in-depth hero guide to Ekai. The Panda Warrior. Boom! Have you ever wanted a hero who is very tanky, very mobile, and is not fat but chubby? Do you like pinning enemies to the wall like a bully asking nerds for their lunch money? Or do you want to be the center of attention in a team fight? If that's a yes, then Ekai is the hero for you. For emblem sets, I advise getting Roamer if you have it on level 30 or above since it gives high cooldown reduction and movement speed plus the additional HP. Or you can just go with tank emblem since that works perfectly with a tank that is Ekai or even go physical emblems if you're lazy to do research about emblems and leveled up the first thing that you saw. For battle spells, only Petrify is worth taking on Ekai. It will help you stop enemies on their tracks for a short while so you can position your ult better and it works on multiple enemies. For the item build, it is best to go with Cursed Helmet first so you can damage everyone with its aura passive. It will let you take more hits as well because of the additional HP and magic resist. Take Warrior Boots next for that awesome additional armor that will complement the magic resist that you already have from Cursed Helmet. Next up, take Ghost Statue so you can be the fastest panda alive and can visit other lanes in no time. Be careful though as the movement speed only works if you're not in combat. The additional HP and HP regen it provides is perfect for sustaining your lane. Take Dominance Ice as your fourth item to get more armor, more mana, and that awesome passive that slows everyone down around you. This item is perfect for Akai because this lets you keep your enemies closer as you repeatedly hit them with your bamboo stick while they're trying to panic run away from you. It also provides cooldown reduction so you can keep throwing frogs at your enemies or consistently jump onto them. After that, get Oracle to balance your armor and magic resist out. It gives more HP and cooldown reduction as well. And the passive that regenerates your HP whenever you take damage is especially useful during team fights. It will help you stay alive longer and be the center of the attention even longer. To top it off, get Demon's Advent so everyone can just cry while they hit you with damage that you won't even feel because it has been reduced by the item's passive. For the skill build, Prioritize maxing skill 2 as this is your main form of harass. You can use this repeatedly from safe distances so it would be good if you can get this to its highest damage as soon as possible. Put 1 point on skill 1 as its main purpose is for mobility and not damage and get skill 3 whenever you can. Ekai's passive is called Tai Chi. This passive is why Ekai is so tanky. Imagine having a shield that lasts for 2 seconds every time you use a skill. And what do you do during team fights? You use skills, right? What do you do on 1v1? You use skills. Or even when jungling. Although this skill provides you shields, it can only be activated every 2.5 seconds. So try to use it wisely and put gaps in between your skill if you're trying to activate the shield in between. Skill 1, Thousand Pounder. The Guinness Book of World Records have not seen how far this panda can jump. Man, this lets you be far away from the enemy and be hugging them in the next second. You can use this to get in the middle of team fights, go where the enemy mages or marksmen are, or even use it for escaping. Thousand Pounder is very useful when you're trying to position yourself for combos that we are going to talk about later. Skill 2, Blender, or what I like to call frog bending. 
You can call upon the power of the Great Frogs to damage your enemies from long distances. It can hit multiple enemies and will give them a Kero Keropi marker. This marker will let you deal additional damage to enemies when you do basic attacks on them. They will also get stunned if you hit them with skill 1 while they have the marker. Skill 3, Hurricane Dance. Or what I'd like to call, get away from me, I'm a dancing panda. For a few seconds, Akai will transform into the ultimate bamboozle hurricane that punishes the evil and knocks back anyone you come across. It also removes any disables like stunts, slows, snares on him. This can interrupt a good number of skills and ults and it's also very effective for pushing away enemies to where you want them to be and we'll have a closer look at that later. Alright, now it's time to talk about combos. There are multiple ways in giving your enemies pandemonium. Let's start with an easy one. Skill 1 to skill 3. This is often used to get next to your enemies and push them away to your teammates or even towards your own tower. You just have to make sure that you land on the opposite side of where you want to push them. It takes practice but you'll master it in no time if you keep repeating it. Another good combo and I think this is the standard combo for every frog bender is to hit them with your skill 2 first before jumping over them using skill 1. You do this to make sure that your skill 1 stunts the enemy instead of slowing them. And in that moment that they're unable to do anything, move to the side where you want to push them from and use your ult. You can either push them to the closest wall to pin them or towards your teammates like you're a pizza boy delivering a pizza to a house full of starving pizza addicts. Okay, so nice combos, but what about Petrify? You can use Petrify before or after your skills. Like for example, after jumping into an enemy but you didn't hit them with skill 2 first, you can use Petrify to stun them in place for a bit so you can run to the position where you want to push them from and then proceed with using your ult. You can also just plainly use this if you are close to 1-2 to two enemies just to interrupt them or stop them from chasing allies or stop them from running. At the start of the game, buy the 250 gold boots for early mobility and recommend Elegant Gem in the shop afterwards for HP and mana sustain. And then just buy items according to what pops up on your screen. While in lane, constantly try to land your skill 2 on the enemy heroes. If you can't hit them, just keep on killing the minion waves. In case you end up putting markers on them though, immediately jump on top of them with skill 1 and proceed to do basic attacks on them. Do not be afraid to exchange basic attacks with enemies while they have the frog marker. Because while that marker is up there, you do more damage to them than they do to you. And don't forget to use your skills, especially skill 2, once it's up so you can get a shield and they get a marker again. You can also use skill 1 to get away as well in case you're losing that trade. Once you get your ult, try to hide in bushes and hit them with the same combo. Skill 2 to give them a marker, then skill 1 to jump on top of them, walk a bit for better positioning and then use your skill 3 or ult. You can push them to towers or pin them to walls and they won't be able to do anything at all. Once you get a few items and maybe destroy the first enemy tower in your lane, proceed to helping other lanes get their other towers down. You can especially be useful if you go with your mage or your marksman so that you can protect them or hold down enemies for them to kill. Try to always interrupt mages from casting ults by jumping on top of them and then petrifying them before using your ult. This is just in case you can't hit them with skill 2 first if enemy tanks are blocking the way. For enemies that have stun or can stop you from opening a can of whoop ass, use your ult as this removes any disable you might currently be suffering from and proceed to spin towards them for revenge. Late in the game when one or two inhibitors might have already fallen, be ready to fight for ownership of the lord. Ekai is very useful for keeping enemies away from the lord or even trapping them in the lord pit in case they started it first. Keep chasing and jumping towards squishy enemies but at the same time, make sure you have an ally to back you up. It it wouldn't be good if you jump into 5 enemies without anyone supporting you. Always protect your allies from enemy assassins trying to end them by using your ult to push them away. Or even petrify if it's available. You protect but you also attack. For some final tips in finishing off a game, keep grouping up with your allies and don't split push if you don't need to. This panda is built for team fights and that's where he shines best. Just keep spinning like there's no tomorrow. Like today is the last day of your panda life, like if you don't spin now you'll never get a chance to spin again.
spinning and lead your allies to victory over the Fire Nation. Just beware of random owls from Hogwarts that prevent you from stunning and knocking back enemies, or random squirrels that can magically turn you into a huggable neighbor. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something. My name is Shinman Takizo and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.